Dzień dobry. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to Mr. Michał Kurtyka, Minister, the Minister, and Mrs. Beata kozłowska hyłę Chairperson of the Supervisory Board of Grupa Lotos SA. First of all, we would like to ask Minister, the Minister, to uh, say a few words for the beginning and then we will move on to the main assumption, key assumptions of our strategy for 2017-22. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not need a long time, but I would like to welcome to all of you and uh, I am very happy to be here as the key shareholder of Grupa Lotus SA. I am very happy that the strategy of Grupa Lotus SA was developed. Uh, Grupa Lotus SA being a strategic company for Poland and with this strategy we have a new dimension. We will look for new areas for growth for Grupa Lotos, not only in the region but also outside of the region, as well as the diversification of uh, Grupa Lotos business. Therefore, this strategy, which has already been published partially on your website, this strategy will ensure a stable and solid and robust growth of the company based on very solid footing. Therefore, I'm very happy to be here today and congratulations to the management board. And we are, we cannot wait for the details of the strategy. Ladies and gentlemen, the thesis and the key assumptions of the new strategy for uh, Grupa Lotos SA for stability and safe growth will be presented today by today's speakers, Mr. Marcin Ostrzemski, uh, member of the management, um, vice president of the management board, Mr. Mateusz Aleksander Bonza, vice president of the management board, chief strategy and development officer, and Mr. Mariusz Machajewski, vice president and member of the management board, chief financial officer. I will now, now give the floor over to Mr. Marcin Jastrzemski, Chief Operations Officer, Chief Product, Chief Upstream Officer, and the Acting President of the Management Board. Hello. Welcome to all of you. At today's presentation of and discussion of our new strategy. As you might well know, this Management Board has been working since May this year and we took our office at a company that, which did not have a strategy proper as a whole. We did not have a strategy, we only had certain assumptions. Therefore, one of our key goals and uh, objectives that we have set for ourselves is to define what to do in the future and what and how to work in the future to ensure stable growth for our shareholders in the years to come. As you can see, the strategy covers the period from 2017 to 2022, and it's divided. And today's presentation is broken down into several chapters. First of all, we'll discuss the Lotus Group today, as it looks today. And we will also summarize the implementation, the delivery of the previous strategy, which was completed last year. We will briefly discuss today's environment as in terms of the threats, opportunities, and trends in the market. Then we will move on to our ideas, our objectives and initiatives of how to develop and ensure growth of our company. And we will also discuss strategy metrics and financial um, ambitions and objectives. And this will be followed by summary. Later on, we will have a Q&A. And also, uh, we will finish the presentation with a coffee and snacks. As far as Lotto's group today, we, I guess, I believe you all know uh, the history of Lotto's. Uh, therefore, I will discuss it only briefly. Lotos is a well-managed 
refinery in terms of the technical dimension. And we are very happy to say that a Lotus, uh, the group Alotos is um, competitive not only in Poland but also across the entire region. I believe that after implementation of the 10 plus project and the EFRA project, which is to be completed next year, we will be one of the best, if not the best refinery in all of Europe, which makes us very happy and proud. And this is why, why all the investments are being implemented to ensure that our return on investment is high, as high as possible, to be more flexible and to react more flexibly and effectively to the trends and developments in the market. I have cited, and I have cited for a reason, because we will now move on to our upstream business. As you know, our upstream business outside of the Baltic area is a moderately profitable business, so to speak, and also an example, but also an example of how can you move on from a moderate success towards a great success, which we are planning for the future. We will also discuss the so-called tax shield in Norway um, to that end to make to, ha to achieve advantage because of the tax shield we have made a number of acquisitions in upstream in Norway. We achieved a 30% market share and also 10% of the retail market in Poland and let me Repeat one more time, we have a very secure refinery, very safe, safely operating company, a company that makes entire generations proud and also the entire country and especially the Pomeranian region. We have listed certain strengths and weaknesses in our strategy. I will not focus too much on the weaknesses because we know what to improve, but also I would like to but I will would like to focus on our opportunities and strengths. Therefore I will discuss all segments of our business of our of our business one by one. Uh, let us start with upstream. We are cooperating with major major players in the in the region in Norway and our recent experience with IMA shows very clearly that, is very, that it is very important to select business partners who have the same goals, who share the same logic for their business, who share the same approach and vision with regards to the building of upstream portfolios and also the selection of our partners in Norway is important to us but not only in Norway, because we will, as we will later discuss, we want to grow in this area as well. The upstream segment is important to us for a very simple reason. We want to grow and we want to diversify our portfolio. We have high profitability of our deposits and fields, especially in the Scandinavian region, and we want to improve our knowledge, our expertise, expertise, and we want to build our experience and also improve our financials and our performance because this is what it all comes down to. As you all know, we have an up-to-date, state-of-the-art and technologically advanced refinery, one of the newest in Europe. And although it was built, was started back in uh, the 70s in the dark communist era, it's, it has always been using technologically advanced solutions. This gives us a great opportunity to flexibly select our feedstocks, which we process. As you might know, we have processed iron, we have processed um, crude oil from Iran in our refinery was operated in 85% and could cover 85% of our business, this refinery alone. Therefore, we are very flexible and this is our great advantage. Logistics is very important to us as well. As you all know, we are located by the sea 
This makes us very flexible in terms of the purchasing procurement of our feedstocks. We do not have any logistical problems. However, it does extend our transport roads inland. Therefore, if we discuss logistics today, we are talking about Lotos Kole, and we are talking about a cost-effective company which will improve our efficiency, which will reduce our logistics costs across the entire organization, across the entire value chain. This is very important to us, of utmost importance, and we are very happy to say that despite the very difficult condition in the railway business in Poland, this company is the second largest railway company transporting the so-called chemicals, and we are very happy that this company has plans for growth and it expands in Western market, especially in Germany right now. This is of major importance to us versus the performance of in the entire organization. The marketing segment. We are located at, by the seaside, as I said. Therefore, we are able to easily export and transport our products and import our products as well. And considering uh, the declining demand in Western Europe and the expected uptrend in the Polish market, I believe that also we will be able to tackle the great zone effectively. This all combined is combined and we have a good window for growth for our further expansion outside of Poland. In terms of our retail sales, we have 480 service stations today. We are the leader of the, pro of the MSA motorway service area market. We have a lot to improve, that is true, and we, will, we would like to and we will improve our performance in this area. We are planning to work harder on the efficiency of our network itself and also certain changes, internal changes, which will be introduced within our retail network. We do not we do not expect major capex on retail, but we need to extend and upgrade our retail chain internally. However, we will also take into account certain acquisitions if necessary. These are our plans and these are our growth objectives and also the basis for further development and growth of Grupa, Grupa Lotos as a whole which will be implemented at, at a faster pace than before. We are implementing unique projects, especially in the upstream area, in cooperation with Lotus Petro Baltic, especially the development of the B8 field, which is a project of key importance to us because the actual reserves, the 2P reserves, are 30 million barrels. We want to develop the new Adgard field and tie in the new Adgard field, field in Norway based on the Sleipner infrastructure and also our share in the infrastructure related to that field. As, we, as you know, we are also working on the before B6 field on the Baltic Sea and the development of that field. In terms of EFRA, the EFRA project, the next year will be a very difficult moment for us. Thousands of employees will face a maintenance shutdown in the refinery. Therefore, we will have to shut down and break our operations for a certain period, but this will be discussed later on, especially uh, in terms of its financial dimension. The completion of EFRA project, however, will improve our effective refining margin and me and all of us, and especially me, are very nervous when we are checking, when we check 
all the metrics related to that investment because of the differences and changes in crack spreads. However, the crack spreads are still as assumed before, and this makes us very happy as well. Therefore, the improvement of uh, refining margin will improve our financial stability. But stability is something that we have achieved already. The refining margin improvement will increase our opportunities of growth in the future. After this project is implemented and delivered successfully, the EFRA project, as you can see on this slide, we will have a higher Solomon factor, which will make, which will make us the most state-of-the-art and modern refinery in Europe. What is also important against this background is the fact that despite the timeline and the schedule for this project is very, very difficult, we have managed to accelerate the delivery of this project. We do our best to make the best out of this project and deliver this project as effectively as possible in terms of our cooperation with our general contractors and other partners. Therefore, we are actually ahead of the schedule, which was very stringent and very difficult in the first place. But we are doing it to increase our safety margin. So this is the picture, the background of um, LOTOS as, as a company today. In terms of our financials, as you can see, we are improving our financial metrics and our financial performance. We have recorded, we reported a record-breaking refinery margin. And as you can see, after nine quarters, the situation is even better. Due to the declining of the, the declining margins in 2016, was compensated to set off with higher production, upstream production, in especially in the Baltic Sea. Therefore, our financial situation is very stable and safe, especially operating cash flows and capital capital expenditure. This all improves. This all ensures a very stable situation in terms of an, of our balance sheet. We are doing our best to reduce our net debt and to improve this part of our balance sheet. At the end of 2016, we will have a net debt to EBITDA ratio, which, was, which will be lower, two times lower uh, than before. It will increase slightly in the next year due to on the back of the implementation of our EFRA project, but this will not affect our situation in general. In terms of our financials, therefore, we are based on a very solid footing, and this makes us very proud. As Ms. Minister has just mentioned, we want to deliver the highest possible return on investments to our shareholders. And we have certain responsibilities to Poland, the Republic of Poland as well. Therefore, considering and based on our flexibility, we are able, we are well able to increase or take care of the diversification of supplies in the country. We are working hard on improvement of our mandatory reserves and also, which is closely related to our technologies, we are able to produce highest, produce highest quality fuels. We take utmost care of corporate social responsibility as well. But this will be discussed later on by my colleagues. Thank you very much. And I will now give the floor over to Mateusz Aleksander Bonza, who will discuss the uh, market environment and market situation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to all of you. Uh, a very warm welcome, especially to uh, the minister. In a few words, in a nutshell, I would like to discuss our current situation, and we will discuss this in more detail in the months to come. But I believe that uh, the way we react to the market and the way we read the market uh, is 
the proper way and we strongly believe that our assumptions are justified. When we joined this company, uh, when we took our seats, uh, we wanted to examine the company from the inside, but we wanted also to examine uh, the market at large, both globally and in Poland. And we see fundamental changes in terms of uh, the environmental policy and the sourcing of energy. We are well aware of the fact that this will impact, uh, this will have uh, an influence in general on a company uh, and it may impact our business. Hybrid ve vehicles, new forms of energy, electric cars, but also Industry 4.0, which is a very nice name, but it actually influences our business as well. And uh, another issue is the weakening, the weakening demand for oil products in the EU. The energy efficiency is growing and this market is changing. Our competition in the market is growing. Obviously, we operate in Poland, but we also operate globally and the dynamics of this market is constantly, are, is constantly changing in the middle East and also in Asia, the GDP in those markets is developing, is changing. And we need to take a close look at that situation and that, at those markets because they, it may uh, impact our situation as well. And last but not least, Poland's energy efficiency. We strongly believe that our own energy sources will ensure stability. And we also want to diversify our supplies and retain flexibility in procurement of our feedstocks. We do not want to have long-term relationships, fixed relationships. Uh, we want to have a certain way, um, margin of flexibility while remaining uh, highly effective and responsible. Now, the three key trends or key proposals, first of all, we have an increase in global demand for energy. It is rising, the mix is changing. However, if we look at different fuels, we still see that liquid fuels and gas are still a very important parts of this business. Of course, other fuels and other energy sources, um, their importance is growing as well. However, this is due mainly to developing countries and developing countries are catching up with our part of the world. And if we take a look at the demand of, uh, for refinery project, uh, this demand is growing as well. And uh, we need to remember that in Europe, uh, the dynamics is uh, slightly different than uh, in the world at large. We are very happy to say that this dynamics is to our advantage and the product groups and the demand for key product groups such as gasolines in Europe is declining. However, the experts are is rising in Europe in general. Jet, that is aviation full. The demand is increasing and the expert is increasing as well. Therefore, we can see clear demand in Europe and it still has not been satisfied. And what is important to us in our uh, current structure, the demand for Diesel is growing in Europe and the exports is growing as well. Therefore, we can say that in our core business, we can say that our business is based on a very stable footing. And the last claim or thesis is the fact that the, the demand for key fuels and energy sources in uh, in Europe, in Western Europe, is declining. However, in the CEE region, we can see that this demand is growing. All the initiatives aimed at energy efficiency are here. However, we are catching up with the markets very, very quickly. Therefore, the demand for fuels here in Poland is still very good and we still have a promising situation in the CEE region. In terms of Poland, we believe that Poland is still a very promising market and, and offers great potential for growth. Uh, we have a correlation between the GDP and fuels and the same for certain 
neighboring countries such as Czech Republic and the Slov and, and other. Uh, in the Czech Republic, we had a s certain gap. Uh, we will discuss it uh, later on. In Poland, however, this gap has increased since 2011 and it has increased to a very large extent. The gap is gradually closing. However, we need to remember that uh, the demand in the CEE region will improve and increase. And Poland is the market which I believe is the, play, is the, is the market in which we will place our products. So these are our foundations and these are our key assumptions. Obviously, we uh, had more uh, assumptions and analysis. However, in a nutshell, we believe that there is still good demand for our core projects, although we do see a certain dynamics and changes and we might be, we must be prepared for a change uh, in our business uh, because our market environment will evolve and will uh, change. Now I will now give the floor over to uh, my my colleague. The strategy now and uh, the growth strategy. This is our vision for safe and stable growth. We want to grow. We want to be an optimal, optimally vertically integrated fuels and chemicals company, and we will be a vertically integrated company from next year on. As I said, it is very important to take care of our logistics and service business. They are highly specialized areas and we want them to be highly effective as well, to be cost effective because a reduction of costs will improve the value of our company as a whole and will also improve our competitiveness versus other market players. What is very important to us as well is the fact, and this has been mentioned before, is the fact that we do not have any tools to predict the development of the market in the future. The energy revolution is still something we cannot be sure about. We want to prepare ourselves to that revolution. We want to be the leader of innovations and implementations of projects which will improve our financial performance in general. As far as our strategic objectives for 2017-2022, they are as follows. We want to, we will improve the use of our assets along the entire value chain to make it more effective. We want to ensure that our integrated margin is going up while our, our costs are going down. This is of utmost importance to us. We also want to improve and streamline our internal processes, which is interrelated to the first objective, but they are meant and designed to improve our functioning as a company. We will work hard, or continue to work hard, on the proper or optimum manner of implementation of our innovations. And let me emphasize the word implementation. We want to make those innovations actually work in practice to our benefit and to the benefit of our country. We are changing internally as well, so as to be able to interpret and react to more flexibly to our environment. We are improving our management system and the system of our of management of our uh, opportunities and risks. We want to be wiser in order to react more effectively and more flexibly, flexibly to the changing environment so that we can take good decisions in the future. Our team, our strong team, is very important uh, to us because we need to develop our skills and competencies all the time because if you do not grow, you will, be, you will not be strong. And this is why we work with our people and we want to continue to work with them to make sure that whatever we do in the future, we do it well. We will also take care of the safety and security of our entire organization, of, uh, of our facilities, of our refinery. 
This is of uh, crucial to us as well. And we will also improve our competencies, our competencies and skills in that area. For each and every one of those strategic objectives, we have developed and defined detailed growth initiatives and objectives, which we believe will improve our performance. As far as the effective use of our assets, we are talking mainly on uh, about a safer growth concept in the upstream portfolio. And we are also talking about a situation when this, where this upstream portfolio, which, by the way, is more effective than it was in the past, but it must prepare us for the years to come. We have a good point right now. We're having a good uh, opportunity right now to make more acquisitions. And we want to take advantage of that. However, we need to remember that the proportions between the fields and, uh, and their development and their timelines are very important. Since the moment of the first investments in upstream, there has been a lot to do and the company has learned its lessons. And we are very happy to say that our partners can see that and have noticed that, but it is of utmost importance to us to make sure that this company remains safe in the future in terms of the upstream portfolio, to make sure that the upstream portfolio is well designed for our purposes. As I said before, the competitiveness depends on whether we are we are able to take advantage of our expertise, of our good geographical location, uh, of also the skills of our team and our openness to new challenges. We are talking about a refinery and actually the last 10 years has been only defined uh, by challenges only, uh, especially the EFRA or 10 plus projects which have been developed, designed and implemented by our uh, own team. Therefore, we have a good potential to remain an innovator. Lotus Energy Hub in retail, this is a crucial project for us as well. We want to improve that, the share of uh, that segment in the company's revenue. Effective processes guaranteeing stability uh, is broken down into, first of all, cost reduction. We are implementing a cost reduction program. And this program Im includes or is broken down into a number of uh, projects and sub-programs. They are all designed to make this company more cost-effective. And also we want to manage the, our, uh, our margins and manage our procurement. All procurement-related activities are meant to increase our margins. Therefore, diversification and safety energy and energy security can be combined with cost reduction. However, a lot of work is needed to achieve that goal to tune our margin or to fine tune our margin. So a lot has been done. However, we still have room for improvement and we will improve. We must be ready and willing to implement innovations. This is of key importance. We know who we are today, but we also need to need the tools to implement our innovative projects uh, faster. Uh, and it's very important. This is a, a very important element of any innovation. We have internal team of specialists. We have good in-house infrastructure and we are able to outpace or outdo the competition. And this is what we are doing. Active management of our opportunities and risks. One of the traits that I really appreciate uh, uh, as far as my workers, co-workers are uh, concerned is honesty. And we have a lot of potential in our organization as well. We have a great corporate and personal culture. As any corporation, also Lotus Group needs enhancements, needs improvements. However, This is a very good point for us, and this is a very good situation for us, and uh, we are very optimistic about our growth in terms of our business and the, our business culture. 
we want to ensure satisfaction of our shareholders and stakeholders in general. We want to mitigate and manage our risks. Since we have specialists, we have a lot of talent. Caring for talent is also a key to our growth. This makes us strong, this makes us safe. Not only in the refinery, but also it gives us an opportunity to be more and more innovative. Let me now move on to the first segment, to upstream. As I said before, this segment is based on an optimum portfolio of projects. We are working to improve our portfolio. We are getting better and better and this, is, this has been noticed by our foreign partners. One example is uh, the IMA operator's decision, which has been changed. I believe that uh, towards the, by the end of the first quarter, we will go back to this project. Today, we are working on the PDO, the new project for the development of that field. And I do hope that the ministry, uh, the Norwegian ministry, will approve that project. And whatever caused problems with this project, I believe we will be able to eliminate it and to actually achieve success on the IMA project. This is all possible to, to our determination because we were able to show the opportunities and uh, the promises that this project lies ahead of us. The fact that we failed and the project failed in the first attempt, that's not, this attempt does not mean that this project is actually condemned to fail. Our work in Norway uh, made us understand to uh, understand this segment and Norway in general, the uh, upstream segment in Norway, uh, better. We want to develop. Uh, on the both sides of the Norwegian shelf. Today, the market situation is very favorable for the purchasers, the acquirers. We are analyzing possible acquisition projects and also the entire companies or businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. And we believe and we hope that we will improve and extend and develop that segment successfully. It is very important to us as well because there are a number of services in that segment which could be implemented through our subsidiaries. Estimates alone for the utilization of the equipment on the British side are the estimates are at about a hundred million of British pounds. This can be a good direction and I believe this will be a good direction for Lotus. This will give us additional revenue for Lotus Petrobalti for Petrobalti or Lotus service and we want to be included in those projects for sure. We take a great care on our on this business and Everybody in the market needs to reduce upstream costs. Our upstream costs are being optimized. They are lower, especially in the Baltic Sea. And according to the forecasts, our current forecasts, we will have the capex of 3 billion PLN earmarked for the upstream segment for the upcoming period. In 2018, when we will see how this market actually has evolved, we will be able to define the increase in revenue from in both segments more precisely uh, and our, uh, we estimate that we will have an additional amount of 3.3 .3 billion PLN to use across those uh, segments uh, in terms of capital expenditure. We have worked hard to learn more about the upstream segments to outpace and outdo the competition and today 
I believe that our competencies are comparable to the competencies of our major competitors. We are, we are respected, a respected partner in the locations when we extract hydrocarbons and we want to develop even more in those locations. Now, uh, I'll give the floor over to Mateusz Alexander Bonza again. Thank you very much. In terms of our refining segment, we know that we need to run away from the competition. The only opportunity for us to remain competitive is to improve our efficiency and to include new products, to develop new products. We see three types of projects uh, which we need to focus on. We spend a lot of time analyzing all the growth potentials. We spend a lot of time discussing it with the experts and we selected three basic groups of projects which we need to implement and we, which we need to work on more in the future. First of all, we need to create uh, a base of uh, more high margin projects, products. We want to enhance the flexibility of our refinery by including well-known but also very promising products. First of all, a new elephant complex, including an AT BE unit, which will improve its efficiency, and also our refinery infrastructure, improvement of our refinery inf infrastructure. We know this market, we have good sources of feedstocks, and we are able to uh, manage this project, effect project effectively. The second project will consist, will focus on the development of motor gasolines from NAFTA. The second group of new projects are products, new products. Uh, by new, I do not only mean new products for us, but globally new products. And we are talking, first of all, about Group 3 and Group 2 base oils, heavy base oils, which are not yet popular across the market, and uh, therefore their prices and the crack spreads are more, more, much more favorable in comparison with light base oils. And the second type of project leverage, which we will focus on, is a more effective production by improving the reliability of energy supply, and especially steam, uh, especially based on a new in-house CHP plant. Z these are the three groups of projects which we will analyze more in the future and we will have investment decisions in 2018. We do have the EFRA project in place. We will discuss its financial performance in the in more detail in just a second. However, the EFRA projects project complements our refinery business business. However, in those three areas which I have just discussed are rather new projects. We want to take a step forward to extend our business and to take advantage of our technology and to extend our value chain as well. As far as CapEx is concerned, we have earmarked 3 billion PLN for upstream, 2.5 uh, billion PLN for refining. And as I said before, as we said before, in 2018, we, will, we might have the additional 3.3 billion PLN uh, to be broken down or used in either of those segments. In terms of our marketing segment is concerned, uh, we have a large chain, retail chain. Uh, we cover a large area of uh, our country. However, we must focus on improvements in terms of the quality and also implementation of certain novelty products and services. Our our service chain network will improve, will increase, however, it will not increase uh, as fast as it did, uh, as it had uh, before. We will also replace certain locations of our service stations. We need to optimize the customer service and sales processes because we always say that uh, a network is as good as its weakest link. And as you probably notice, there are certain quality differences between our service stations. We will also revamp our loyalty scheme, which is very strong. However, we can see certain room for improvement as well in terms of the royal loyalty scheme. We are 
introducing new food and drink services. A hot dog and coffee is a good, oh, it's always a good thing. However, we want to offer something more to our clients as well. And we want to also improve and upgrade our uh, on-site facilities. And I'm not talking only about car wash stations, for instance, but we, on we want to also include electric car charging points. And Lotus Energy Hub, this is a project that we take great care of because we believe that this market is ready for this new project. We need to take advantage of the co-financing. We need to use external funds to build our and extend our infrastructure route, which will be used in the future, if not today, but in the future. As far as our preparation for market future market challenges, we need to work on it without any questioning. As far as acquisition opportunities are concerned, we are uh, constantly observing the situation in the market. We are constantly on the lookout for non-organic opportunities to expand our uh, retail chain. As far as CapEx for the years to come, we have earmarked 0.6 billion PLN for the 2017-2022 period in, in general uh, on the improvement. This will be earmarked for the improvement of our efficiency and extension of our retail services and products. As far as the e efficiency improvement program is concerned, we want to achieve higher margins and reduce our costs. First of all, by optimizing the group structure, but also through gradual simplification of our corporate internal procedures. We can see a, a good leverage for our procurement. We can take advantage of a number of tools and processes in procurement so as to make sure that we are more cost effective. Cost effective. And we also believe that the IT systems, the IT muscle in our company needs to be improved. We need to have a more efficient IT tools and systems to enhance our business. On the other hand, we have a well-integrated margin optimization. We are at a very advanced stage uh, in terms of simulations, forecasting and planning. Uh, we will continue those trends. We want to leverage our location, geographical location even better. And we will also um, develop our uh, professionality and our competencies in sales. Our goal and ambition is to sustainably reduce our expenses. We want to reduce our cost and so that you can actually see and feel it. And we also want to be effective along the entire value chain. Innovations is a major topic and a major area for us. And if we consider that uh, the market forecasts are not certain, are very uncertain, uh, we need to remember that this can change in the future. First of all, we need to work with stable partners. We are always talking about uh, research agencies, research centers and universities. However, we want to reverse the research agenda setting model. We want LOTOS to set the agenda. We want LOTOS to ask questions and to set the objectives. This is very important to us. Secondly, we want to implement innovations, but we want to implement them practically. We want to invest in good projects which are viable and this is why we are building a fast track for the implementation of our ideas. We will implement them but also we will look for external financing for those projects. We want to build bridges between us and other partners, be it business partners or financial partners, so as to implement those projects together in cooperation. We will pilot those projects in 2017 uh, with a full-scale implementation, which is planned in 2018. And last but not least, proprietary in-house innovations. We have had a little or small pilot project uh, at one of our subsidiaries. We had 200 employees involved. Uh, most of them were perfect one of them has been actually implemented in practice and this has only this was only a small project therefore we can see a great opportunity and a room for improvement we want to uh, take advantage of those opportunities in the future we want to be more creative in terms of uh, collaboration with partners 
First of all, we have two top we have two topics uh, first of all we have uh, our areas of business current areas of business lng cng uh, fuels we are active in this area we are working uh, in this area both uh, internally and also in cooperation with other partners but we are also willing uh, to work on new projects uh, to uh, we want to have new collaboration models we will work actively to achieve it. And we are not only talking about good trends on paper. We are rather thinking about very concrete new business models which can be implemented in practice. And also uh, very ac uh, effective projects uh, on, on the sea, um, offshore projects, which we have discussed before. In terms of risks, This is a rather corporate issue, but it should be to uh, should be important to you as well. Grupa Lotos has a very mature risk management system. This system uh, feel, makes us feel very secure. We have a well-functioning business. We have a good risk finance and compliance muscle. And the third line, internal audit, this is something we must still work on and we must improve this area. We are fighting for the margins and we know that internal audit, if we improve the internal audit muscle, it will improve our margins as well. And last but not least, CSR, our responsibility for stakeholders. We want and we will be a, an employer of choice and we are an employer of choice. We have a professionally designed model for uh, the assessment of uh, our uh, employees' performance. We know that people are our greatest strength and value. The infrastructure is a value by itself. However, the people who manage that infrastructure are important as well. We want to be remain active in the interaction of our stakeholders so as to permanently solve both social and environmental problems and issues, uh, while at the same time always having the of, uh, security and safety in the back of our heads. Safety is of utmost importance for us. EFRA project alone if if we take EFRA project alone, we are talking about thousands of man hours of work without any single work accident. This is very important and we will focus on this in the future as well. Maybe now we will uh, talk numbers and we will have uh, certain uh, financial metrics uh, discussed by Marusz Mahayevsky, uh, who will present the financial part of our strategy. Before we move on to financial modeling, we need to answer a number of questions about our future, forward-looking questions. Of course, we do not have a crystal ball to predict the future. However, we are expert in this market, and we are always trying to predict and forecast the market developments. As we have said before, the market for our com for companies such as ours will be uh, functioning well in the future. However, uh, the concrete metrics are much much more difficult to predict we also consult um, we always consult external experts and based on a number of analysis we have agreed on a certain forecast for the financial performance uh, of our business in the future on this slide we can see our basic macroeconomic assumptions which were used for our strategy in terms of the most transparent parameters, they are rather conservative. The numbers presented are rather conservative. We conservative. We will not have. We will not see the price of oil, the crude oil, uh, which we saw in a couple of uh, a couple of years ago. We will rather see a stabilization of the crude prices. We cannot expect a very high margins, refining margins in the future as well. We can expect that the the coming two or three years will be favorable for us. However, in 2020 onwards, we can predict that the situation in terms of refining margins is not, gonna, is not going to be um, as good. Therefore, we need to work on certain other projects so that to make sure so as to make sure that our margins will remain stable. And EFRA will be 
actually one of the last projects uh, who, which will focus on the production of fuels alone. What is the assumption for us, main assumption of our strategy? We want to double our EBITDA from approximately 2 billion PLN, which had been uh, considered unachievable by many of you in those years, in the past years, but we have managed to achieve it. Um, I remember our discussions uh, in the previous years when I said that we will achieve, well, we, that we would achieve two billion uh, in EBITDA uh, while margins were falling. Uh, nobody believed me back then. However, you can see that we will deliver that target in terms of EBITDA. Therefore, we have a very high starting point f based on which we want to achieve a twofold increase. How will we achieve it then? We want to generate an additional 1 billion of EBITDA from the projects which are already in progress. We have discussed it before. We know, uh, you know our projects uh, in the pipeline uh, currently. The main contributor uh, will be the EFRA project, but we will also have a number of other projects which will contribute to the increase of our EBITDA. Uh, they are being implemented very effectively, and this makes us rather sure, very sure, uh, that we will achieve this target. Other projects... Uh, which will contribute to the increase of our EBITDA are well defined as well. There is not something that we have just made up. The second billion PLN includes and covers the projects which have been already defined. We know the opportunities, we know the limitations. However, we are still um, awaiting the final investment decision for those projects. Therefore, the total of PLN 4 billion in our uh, strategy, which is assumed for a bit uh, until 2022, is a real concrete amount, and we know that if anything, unless anything absolutely unexpected happens on the market, we will be able to deliver that plan. We know how what to do to achieve that plan. We know how much to spend in terms of capex to achieve that plan. Our capex plan for 2017-2022 covers around 9.4 billion PLN. We have discussed the breakdown of this amount. Uh, approximately 2.5 billion PLN will be earmarked for refining. 0.6 billion PLN will be spent uh, in retail. Uh, and uh, around 3 billion PLN will be spent in upstream. In 2018, we assume to uh, we assume that we will earmark uh, an additional amount of 3.3 billion PLN to grow in other areas as well. Uh, as you can see on this slide, we have a very specific breakdown of our capex, of our planned capex, which will contribute to the doubling of EBITDA in the years to come. And we have defined we have defined how we will achieve it in concrete terms in 2017 22 we will still implement large projects which will be still very capital intensive therefore you can see that the capex will be rather high in this period however when we have completed the first round of our investments we will move on to the second phase, and this phase should bring a bit at about 4.4 billion PLN and stabilization of our capex at 1.1.5. Uh, uh, we will therefore be able to reduce our debt. We assume that the net debt to EBITDA ratio will be capped at one point. Five, and we assume that this level is optimum for a company such as ours, for a company who, which wants to, which wants to uh, grow and develop and has further ambitions uh, in uh, the future. Still, we can see certain room for other costs. Uh, we have a dividend paying capacity and we are reducing our debt. We the limit for our forecast, the 2022 is not the limit for our forecasts. We can see that there is still room for improvement and uh, dynamic growth outside or after that period. Of course, we have analyzed 
certain scenarios, uh, worst and best case scenarios in the market. And this is an example of, uh, of the analysis that we have uh, performed at a company so as to make sure that we have a good plan and resilient model to certain extreme scenarios, certain shocks and stresses. We have analyzed a combination of low crude prices and declining refining margins uh, as well as deteriorating um, ex foreign exchange rates. Uh, we have analyzed a scenario in which uh, the PLN, um, the Polish currency, will uh, get exceptionally strong. Therefore, we can see that we have performed some analysis to make sure that we are prepared for the future. However, those differences are not very drastic, are not very risky. We are more and more independent to the very basic element, which is uh, the crude price oil. We are able to balance the effect of crude prices so as to make us as independent as possible from external volatility. I will now give the floor over back to Mr. Marcin Ostrzemski who will summarize our presentation. In a nutshell, I would like to present a summary of our strategy. This, these are our strategic objectives which have been discussed. Each and every one of those objectives is broken down into a number of concrete projects which will contribute to the achievement of our strategy. These are our key metrics, key strategy metrics. We want to double our average annual LIFO based EBITDA. We want to reduce our net debt to EBITDA ratio. Over the six years, we will spend nearly 10 billion PLN on investments in terms of our CapEx plans. We want to increase our reserves to P reserves and also the rate of production. We want to increase the rate of our daily production from 30 to 50,000 barrels per day. We will also improve and upgrade our chain of service stations. And these are the key metrics in terms of financials and strategy implementation for 2017-18 and on the next slide for 2019 and 22. And it is very important to us because those metrics will be used by you to evaluate our performance in the future. Because you will see whether or not we have achieved what we are promising today. Therefore, you will be able to evaluate us in the future. And we are aware, aware of that. And therefore, all the assumptions that we have presented today in this strategy are viable and they are deliverable in the future.